Deborah Pascali Bonaro of Pain to Power Childbirth, and I am just deeply honored today to have Asta here with us. She is one of our alumni, if we can say that, from our Pain to Power Childbirth class, and she's here to tell us a little bit about herself and her recent birth stories. Deborah, thank you so very much. My name is Asta, and uh, we live in Spain now. I'm originally from Lithuania and have traveled a lot and have lived in different countries for the last few years. From the very beginning, we knew um, that home birth was what we wanted, and you know, it's um, pregnancy from very early, a uh, few weeks into pregnancy, we we made a decision, and it really felt like sort of a decision internally that pregnancy is not a disease. It's, I kept thinking that the baby would come early because I had so much work, and I, I I thought, you know, I won't even be able to finish my work in time. Maybe all of a sudden will show up and everything. And then, interestingly enough, she actually came. What? Someone might say late, but I don't believe it's late. I think she came in her own time and when she was ready. But uh, it, we got to week 42, so we passed the due date. And because we, you know, we were not involved in any hospital or any official sort of uh, medical, uh, we were not associated with any medical institution. Um, we just knew that we would have to chat with midwives at some point. Uh, but so week 42 came, and obviously, you know, we started feeling a little bit nervous, and I was already feeling that, you know, my body was doing things, and it just felt so strange, despite all the doubts that were beginning to creep in, and sort of fears, and whatever else, it seemed so strange to think that, you know, for nine months, my body was doing this amazing work, creating this beautiful baby, and everything, and that somehow, in the last moment, the last few weeks or days left, it will just forget what it needs to do and, you know, just stop. And it just seems so like it's it's not possible. I was already having quite a lot of um, what I ended up calling waves. I, I chose, this is one of the other things, I chose to call them waves. Lots of uh, sort of in preparation, I felt like my body was getting there, but it would be maybe once every hour, you know, at that sort of rate mm -hmm. for a few days already. And we started uh, going for walks, we started doing all the things that, you know, naturally, supposedly should should be helpful in, in uh, sort of speeding things along a little bit. So we had this appointment with the midwives and I, I remember I really, really didn't want to go because it, part of me was a bit fearful that they might say, okay, we need to do something, you only have so much time and I just really, really did not like this, this pressure but, you know, we, we decided we will go and see them. And, and we got to the appointment and I remember just before getting to the appointment, we went for a little walk in Madrid and I, I felt so, um, the light was so bright. I felt like the whole world was just too much, you know, the noises, the people and everybody sort of going around their day as if it was nothing. And for me, it was like, no, no, it's something so important is about that. And so just thought the whole world felt like too much, you know, too, too noisy, too loud and too, too bright. So yeah, we got to the appointment and she... She was telling us, um, was asking how we were doing and everything and, and asked, you know, well, so we need to get to this question, the big elephant in the room, what happens if things don't happen in the next few days? And I just said it, I was like, we're waiting. Like, there's no way, you know, for now, there's no risks. I feel great. There's nothing. We're, we're going to wait. She, she checked, uh, checked me to see whether there was any dilation, how things were going. And she, she started laughing and she says, Asta, you're ready four and a half centimeters. The baby's coming in another day or so. There's nothing to worry about. We won't need a backup plan. And I just was so relieved. I remember, you know, sort of bursting into tears and thinking, wow, it's so wonderful to, to have this relief, to have this confirmation that it was okay to wait and the baby is coming at her at her timing and everything. And we got home that night and I remember things were beginning slowly to gain more rhythm and, you know, would, the waves would come and go quite with more frequency and last a little bit longer. But it didn't get much more intense in a, in a couple more hours, so I decided to go to sleep. We had a big dinner because just in case the next day was the day, I wanted to be well well prepared, so we had a really big dinner and went to sleep. And um, and I remember I woke up at night at about two o'clock in the morning, and I just knew it was the beginning of of what would end up being about 23 hours till the very end. But I just knew for me this was when things were starting. And I told my husband, you have to keep sleeping because it's going to be a long, a long journey. Somehow I felt like it would be that way. But I said, I, I have things to do. You keep sleeping. The beautiful part was that 
it was already happening. So I would sort of enter in the cycle of, uh, you know, do something for a couple of minutes and then begin to feel that the wave was coming and just sort of really, really be with it and really, really be present. And then once it's finished, I would have to go to pee and then come back and do a few things again. And it would just cycle like this every sort of 10 minutes. It was going into this completely sort of following what my body wanted at each moment. So if I needed to lean down a little bit or if I needed to harm or something, it was still so, so gentle. The whole process, like we, you know, talk about uh, the course, pain to power and everything. This part, I really, I have to say, I really found very, very pleasant, very enjoyable, very... So I've never been so in touch and so meditative in my body. Like I, I sometimes I'm not one of those people that can meditate very well for a long time, but this was just the perfect sort of meditation, just being present with, with whatever the body wanted to do. One of the midwives said, call when you get, you know, really intense or you have waves every five minutes. And I was having waves every five minutes, but you don't know what intense is until you get to the end of the birth, I think. <laughs> So for me, it was like, is this intense? Well, it's more intense than it was last hour, you know, so I don't know. And we ended up calling them and just saying, just please come whenever we think it's happening. We don't know when it will happen. We've never had this experience. And um, and so they came, uh, it was about, at this point, about three o'clock in the afternoon. So it felt a bit like, you know, you're only five and a half centimeters, you know, we've been along, kind of, you had the whole night and it just seemed to them like you're not quite in labor yet. And part of me was a little bit like, how is this possible? How can people tell me what I'm in labor? And from that moment on, I just got this sort of energy of a bit like, I'm going to show you how I give birth and I am so in labor and I'm going to do this. And so a little bit, and things started getting quite more intense. So perhaps there was a point that I needed, but also I think there was a remaining little, little bit of fear within me, which I had during my whole pregnancy. And that was my biggest fear, which was the fear of being interrupted. Like I never had fears about something being wrong with the baby or even fear of pain or intense sensations was never really part of our experience. It was always for me, the biggest fear was fear of someone interrupting and telling me that I'm not doing it right or my body's not doing it right. Well, it happened, you know, it did get perhaps interrupted, but that doesn't mean anything. My biggest fear, that's it. This is it. This has happened. So I can continue with the rest of it without having to worry about it anymore, in a sense. And that, that's maybe what I what I needed for things to really pick up speed and, and start, you know, getting more, more intense. Time disappears and the whole experience is just, I just remember sort of wandering around the house from one object comfortable to lean on to the kitchen, to the bathroom sink, to what, whatever felt like a, a good place to be. I walked a lot. I feel like I standing for me worked the best. A couple of times um, the midwives checked me when they arrived and then later on in the process checked again to see how far dilated I was. I had to be in the position that is the typical position of giving birth in hospitals and I found it so uncomfortable and actually was when the intensity for me was far worse than than just being standing and letting the gravity do its thing and you know move my hips in whichever way it felt more natural and then one of the midwives said why don't you get in the pool because we had a pool prepared and you know the the, the whole plan was that uh, the baby will be born in the water in the swimming pool and that you know, the baby will be caught by my husband that was the original plan you know for him one of the roles assigned to him and I got in the water and, and it was wonderful. It was very, very calming and very nearly to the point where I think for me, perhaps it had the effect of calming me so much that I nearly just didn't want things to keep going because, you know, things are intense. And, and, and there was a part of me that just wanted to sort of stay there and let's just not go any further. So then at one point, the midwife suggested that I get out again and just let things pick up speed. As much as I enjoy the sensation of water, and you know, we had a very uh, beautifully prepared room with very dim lights, just a few candles and everything. I felt um, I felt like I was on a scene, uh, on a sort of a stage, because here I was in the middle of the pool, and everybody was around and sort of leading in and trying to touch me and sort of comfort and and massage things, you know, my my back or whatnot. And but I just felt like I was, I felt observed in a very strange way and one of the things that I noticed which was very strange that I depending on what 
what I use in terms of words or, or expressions, sensations change. So, for example, swearing, this, this stage that I was mentioning before, it, it felt, in one way, it felt great to sort of release this anger or frustration that I was feeling. In the other way, I felt like it made the sensations even more stronger. So every time I would say, no, I don't like this, or I really cannot take this, or whichever, it, it just really felt like it was sort of making things even more pa painful, if you want to call it, or more intense. Whereas saying something like yes, or uh, I'm opening, or something like this felt very unnatural in the way that, because it's not not the words that you should use, I suppose, or not what's expected, or not what we see in, in films, or whatever. But at the same time, the sensations felt more allowing somehow. So at one point, I just said, I need to go to the bathroom, I need to go to the toilet. And I got out of the pool. And uh, just before I got out of the pool, the midwife had asked me if I had any sensations or any urge to start pushing. And there was a little bit of that, but I just, I said, I need to get out, I need to go to the bathroom. So I... I did, and I ended up going into, all the lights were off in the house, so I just ended up going into the dark bathroom, and instead of coming back to see everyone where everyone was waiting for me, I didn't come back. I just ended up getting into the hot shower, uh, very dark, obviously all the blinds closed, and uh, got into the shower cabin, got the heat of the water going, which was quite helpful during the during these uh, moments and and things started getting really really quite intense i love how you claimed your privacy right we talk a lot about that in the class safety privacy and unobserved one of the moments as well which was interesting was that up until that point the water hadn't broken i was by myself in the shower in this hot uh, dark shower and i reached down and it just felt like it was the right thing to do and i just pressed and the water gushed out and it felt like the, the head dropped and everything sort of like this was now we're now we're ready because I felt like the the water was somehow cushioning the baby and it was still sort of taking time to get to that point a surprise I think it's just the best word to describe it that it, it's possible to sense so much power so much intensity in the body and the body doing itself. I, I never felt at any point like I had to actually push anything or to, it, it was like the body was sort of squeezing itself to, to make all the work happen. You know, I'm normally quite, I'm quite a quiet person. I don't like arguments. I don't like anything. And during the pregnancy, I was going to this body therapy where the a lady was telling me, you need to use your voice. You will need to use your voice during labor. And I always try, but I was like, no, 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 I'm just going to say om and, you know, sort of float when I do labor. This was so strange this was so intense and so different that like I say now more than the actual physical sensations for me I think what what was the the most intense part was the feeling as if as if it was something else like it was more than me that it was not me doing this that it was something happening through me that my voice my body was was in a sense being used for this to happen that even the sound that was coming out of my mouth was not me making the sound. It was like, I keep saying, like, I just had this image all of a sudden during birth of this sort of primal, dirty, ancient wolf coming from underground and howling through me and making all these growling noises. And, and it felt really good in some ways to sort of be able to open my mouth like this and to, to let all of this intensity come out something so big that cannot be contained, something so big coming out of you that it's just the whole essence, the whole essence of you is overtaken by by this amazing, big, bigger than you, you know, experience. And some old traditions, you know, they talk about a woman kind of going to the, to the world of the souls to fetch the soul of the baby, you know? And I just, I just remember feeling this moment of, me sort of disappearing or me going to the like you know now I know beyond a doubt that the place where the souls begin and end this journey is the same place just sort of disappearing and I think this was the moment that sort of in some ways was the scariest but also the most amazing of the whole journey to be able to experience this disappearing of me for a second and and just know that something else is coming and moving over to give space to to, to this force and this new life entering.
and the body all of a sudden had this huge energy and adrenaline and you know squeeze itself and then in between there would be this gush of just nothing just being so restful and content and all of this and and then there was sat again and it, it was just such a surprising sort of dynamic between such intensity and such blissful sort of nothingness that I think uh, I keep saying that I hesitate what pain for me pain and labor as much as it's intense I think pain we're used to something completely different you know we use pain for sort of a sensation that doesn't go away that keeps really bothering us that sometimes even seems like it has no purpose but this intensity in labor is, is just a different thing because it's firstly it's, it's got a huge purpose you know we, we know we're getting near when things get intense and it's also these moments of it disappearing completely it's not like you know you don't if you have a toothache it doesn't disappear every sort of two minutes it's constant and it's annoying and it's all this in between these waves uh, this midwife that snuck in and and then she asked how I was doing I, I thought she was going to say, okay, that's finished. You know, we, we have to take you to the hospital. This is too much. And actually she said, oh my gosh, Asta, you know, you're so close. You're so close. This is so near. One of the big surprises for me was also how, how sort of um, everything felt so engorged. And so, you know, you talk about birth being sexual. And there was a very strange sensation of just everything being so slippery and so big and so, so, so everything being... Like, yeah, like during a really, really powerful orgasm or sort of that, uh, that uh, sort of experience. And, and I kept uh, feeling to see how things were. And then at one point, um, at one point, I just knew that things were very close, that the, you know, you could feel the, the baby's hair and the baby's head and everything. And then all of a sudden, this huge release of the baby, the baby's head popping out. And in the next, uh, in the next wave, in the next uh, sort of push, the whole slithery, beautifully smelling baby came out, and I just glad I was the one that ended up, despite all the plans of you know the baby being born a certain way in a certain place, or with my husband being the first person to touch her, she ended up in my arms, and and I just remember. You know, I cannot say that I had necessarily a birthgasm in the sense of physical sensations, even though I actually know women that have had that experience during the, the pushing phase. And But for me, the, the, the moment of holding her in my arms, I'm just, the ex is the most ecstatic moment I've ever experienced in my life. I think all the orgasms, no matter how amazing they are, combined of my life don't reach that intensity. So beautiful. I can't thank you enough. I mean, as I'm listening, my body is just feeling, you know, those moments of, as you said so well, that intensity, that power, and that joy and ecstasy, right? Of that release from your body into your arms. I think birth is just such a surprising journey in so many ways that on one hand, of course, there's a lot of things to prepare for for the big day and everything like that. But I think at the same time, there has to be an element of just letting things go and just letting go of expectations. The kind of person that I am, I thought that I will have this experience of gently levitating into the air and then the baby just floats out. And, you know, whilst I have two or three orgasms and it's just all going to be so quiet and I'll be so composed and so simple the whole process there's so much information these days that i think unless you come with a very calm mind and very clear filters of what you're looking for it's so easy to get dragged down the roots of very fearful images very um disempowering messages very uh, stories that just are not in any way you'll be informed but you're not empowered as i say i think it's very important to be important to be informed but also feel like that information is giving you more power rather than knowing that now I feel horrible and you know I, I'm so even more scared now that I know. As we set the intention it's not necessarily that things will happen a certain way but to be able to speak in the before before the experience as to what what the expectations are. So for example, you know, I, I had told my husband, I do not want to be asked any questions during labor. Do not 
ask me questions because I don't want to be able to, I don't want to have to think and answer things. So if you want to offer me water, which is going to be one of your principal roles, you know, to keep offering me water every few minutes, then just offer me water. If I don't want it, I'll shake my head, but I don't want to, you to ask, do you want water? And then, you know, me having to make a decision. So things like this, where you discuss with partner, with the team, what are the expectations? What are the roles? What is everyone uh, allowed to do or encouraged to do? And then for them to not take it at all personally, if all of a sudden that whole discussion you've had gets scrapped. I just feel like it's such a such a powerful initiation into whatever else motherhood will require of you, you know, whatever whatever um, experiences will come and it's it's there, you've, you've done it, you've entered the, the new role, you've turned into, you know, when the baby's born, the mum is born, it's a sort of both happen at the same time. Thank you so much, Astra. It's been such an honor and just pleasure to hear your story. I mean, there's something in really looking at you, hearing your words, and feeling the power of it all as you speak. Because birth is something so amazing, right? We can never fully capture it, and yet it forever changes us. And you hear that in your words, and you were just such a strong, powerful um, birthing woman. I'm so touched and moved by you sharing your experience. We'll be in touch again. Thank you. Good night.